Okay, this video is going to look at one method for deriving the Riemann curvature tensor. We're going to do that by looking at covariant differentiation along different directions on a manifold. So just as a reminder, in flat space, uh, basis vectors are the same everywhere. Um, they parallel transport themselves, if you like, so the derivative of the basis vectors is zero, they're just constant. Um, as a result, we only need to consider partial derivatives in flat space, uh, and that's the derivative of the components of vectors. Um, those components uh, also are uh, the partial derivatives of the components are uh, commutative, so the order as shown up here, the order here doesn't matter, the outcome is still the same, because partial derivatives commute, which is a fact for flat space. All right. And the only part in calculations that are involved are the components of the vectors. The derivatives of these basis vectors, because they are constant from point to point, is, is zero. So they don't take part in the differentiation, other than to disappear. In curved space, though, we have something quite different. So if we have a vector uh, field over some manifold or some part of the manifold, vector field might be related to the co components, to the coordinates that label the points in the manifold. Um, what we do know though is that the basis vectors will vary from point to point, so they become significant in curved space, and we must use the covariant differentiation method. All right. So what we're going to do, um, as we found earlier in previous videos, are different, the parallel transporting vectors along different paths gives different results. It's very much path dependent, and that path dependence depends very much on the curvature of the manifold. So what we're going to do is to use this process of covariant differentiation on the vector, but we're going to do it in two different directions. First in the j direction, then in the i, and then we're going to swap that and compare and see what happens. So there's our manifold, um, the x1 coordinate direction, x2 coordinate direction. These are the coordinate curves here, they're labeled. Um, so we'll keep the manifold with just two coordinates at the moment for this manifold. Alright, so first covariant differentiation in direction 1, del V, this operator, uh, cross product, tensor product here. Okay, when we do that, operate that, uh, product rule operates here, and so the derivative of the component times the basis vector plus the component times the derivative of the basis vector. All right, when we expand it out, we come out with this term here. Um, rearranging that, collecting a common term for the basis vector. Here, we're going to swap the mu with the alpha. So it's a simple swap of indices, one up, one down. They're dummy indices, it doesn't matter what we label them. So this can change the mu, that can change the mu. This can change the alpha, that can change the alpha. We can then factorize out the common basis vector. When we do that, we come out with this basis product here. So here's our end result, that differentiation. Alright, now how about differentiating the product of the previous differentiation in direction 2. Again, differential operator here again. Uh, here's the product from the previous differentiation. And now we're going to differentiate that again. So first, the uh, product rule at work here. So we have the first partial derivative of the components here. Then we have the partial derivative of this basis vector here, and then the partial derivative of this final basis vector here. Uh, expanding that out, basis product, um, and just to remind you here, the gamma here, um, this rule down here for the contravariant basis vectors, the partial derivative of that gives us this affine connection here, expanded in terms of this basis here. Um, for the covariant basis vectors, Again, the affine connection, this rule applies here, and then expand it out in this basis. So here we go. If we run through this operation, which I'll continually pass through, now factorize out the basis vectors, and we've got this. Now these covariant differentiations of the, of the vectors here, we'll expand those out down here, here, and here. Again, there's a little bit of index playing around. Um, when they, uh, we have to differentiate this, so we get this uh, partial derivative here, this second order partial derivative. This one here, the affine connection, over here expanding these terms out, and we come out to this basis. 
expanded in this basis here. Okay, moving on now. So here's our previous result on the last page. And if we swap the indices 1 and 2, because we want to first differentiate in the 2 direction, then differentiate in the 1 direction, um, we get this result here. Now, in flat space, all these affine connections would disappear, but in flat space, it doesn't matter what order we do partial derivatives in, but in curved space, it does. And when we subtract these two, what we end up with is this expression here. V mu, V mu there, V gamma, V gamma. Now, just by relabeling of indices, this gamma, that gamma, can be swapped with this mu and this mu here. And when we do that, also here, these this mu and this mu swap with this gamma and that gamma and when we do that we can have V mu which can then be factorized out next to the basis vectors here all right tensor product of the basis vectors and this object left in here is our Riemann tensor this is our Riemann tensor labeled this way for our particular example here in terms of the one direction and two direction um, shown on our diagram earlier. And the Riemann curvature tensor for our manifold shown is this object here. One index up, three indices down, so it's a fourth order tensor. Alright, next. The generalized form, we can replace the one and the two with general indices, and so that's the generalized form for any situation you might come across. Just a reminder in flat space, the affine connection is zero. So the Riemann tensor itself also disappears. Um, and that's a measure of how you identify flat space. We'll look at this a little bit further. But just as a reminder, the role the metric plays, um, this upper index can be lowered using the metric. Um, and then you still have the Riemann tensor with all indices lowered. All right. That finishes that.